Let's take a closer look at the different world maps. Wikipedia tells us, a world map is a map of most or all of the surface of the Earth. A map is made using a map projection, which is any method of representing a globe on a plane. All projections distort distances and directions. Each projection distributes those distortions differently. The Mercator projection is used since 1569. Wikipedia tells us, the Mercator projection distorts the size of objects as the latitude increases from the equator to the poles, where the scale becomes infinite. So for example, Greenland and Antarctica appear much larger than they actually are, relative to land masses near the equator. One measure of a map's accuracy is a comparison of the length of corresponding line elements on the map and globe. Therefore, by construction, the Mercator projection is perfectly accurate along the equator and nowhere else. Of course this is all based on the theory that Earth is a globe. Now let's take a look at the azimuth equidistant projection. Wikipedia tells us, this projection is used by the USGS in the Nation Atlas of the USA. While it may have been used by ancient Egyptians, the earliest text describing this projection dates from around the year 1000. Mercator used it for an inset of the North Pole regions in his map. The logo of the United Nations is a polar azimuthal projection. Azimuthal equidistant projections are also used in radars. In case of radio, this projection allows for antenna aiming. All points on the map are at correct distances from the center point. At any point the North Pole and South Pole is at the exact opposite side since the South Pole is all around. Again, this is all based on the theory that Earth is a globe. If it would be flat that doesn't mean there is an edge or end. If the North Pole is the center and Antarctica is all around, there could be much more than the map shows us. Operation Deep Freeze is the code name for a series of missions to Antarctica by the United States, beginning in 1955. Admiral Richard E. Byrd led an expedition to explore further inland, and conducted the first flight over the South Pole. Let's hear what he has to say. I must say that Admiral Byrd, our guest tonight, is not only our greatest living explorer, but he's been an inspiration to countless Americans. Admiral Byrd, you've been to both the North Pole and the South Pole. Is there any unexplored land left on this earth that might appeal to adventurous young Americans? Uh, yes, there is. And not up around the North Pole because it's getting crowded up there now because they find out it's really usable, not only to live in, but militarily. But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from Middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that unexplored. That's a tremendous So challenge. there's a lot of adventure left mm. down at the bottom of the world. Well, Admiral, well, do you hope to see that? I do. Well, Admiral, yeah. would you say that uh, since you've been to both the extremities of Earth, are these expeditions to such far off places, are they getting easier because of modern techniques or is, still, is danger still close at hand? Well, it's a little risky, but nothing like it used to be with the old slow planes and the small cruising radius where we had to put down bases. We replaced the dog teams and of course that was a big improvement. But now the planes go much faster and they are safer and they have a much bigger cruising radius. You haven't got the danger of a terribly heavy load. Admiral, a, an expedition to which I believe you're the advisor is now en route. Uh, what is that expedition doing? Well, that's the icebreaker ATCA. And it's a reconnaissance expedition. It's going down to the South Pole area to make certain observations and to, to look for some bases. They will be back in April and they will report back. And upon the information we get from that undertaking, uh, we will base the bigger expedition that's to follow. Uh, is that very definitely planned, or uh, is that... Uh, that is being planned right now. So I'm willing to say to you that uh, there will be 
a number of expeditions that will follow, I think, uh, year after year, the bottom of the world, because the government has really become interested. Well, Admiral Byrd, I can understand, I think everybody can, the interest in the North Pole because it's so near our greatest challenger, Soviet Russia, but why this interest in the uh, bottom of the world? Nobody living down there, is there? No, it's, um, it's pretty cold. There's only one permanent resident, that's the Emperor Penguin. The little ones live further north. I tell you one reason they're interested. It's by far the most uh, valuable, important place left in the world for science. That's why the scientific groups all over the nation are really interested. But more important than that, it's, uh, it has to do with the future uh, of the nation those to come after us, or even uh, during your lifetime. Because it happens to be an untouched reservoir of natural resources. And, uh, you know, as the world swings with an ever-increasing acceleration, far-flung places, once useless, like we thought the North Pole was, and no man's land, become very useful. Uh, the bottom of the world will be important, not only to us, but to our allies. Uh, does it, I was going to ask you, does it have military importance? Uh, it has some, and uh, as the world shrinks, it will continue to shrink with an ever-increasing acceleration, thus bringing these places closer. And in the future, I can see a time when it will be very, very important strategically. Well, has the development and, and of air power increased there, the strategic importance of places like the... Uh, oh, very much Palmer so. ...Palmer Peninsula, we'll say? Uh, very much so. Even now... If uh, anything happened and we uh, lost the Panama Canal, we would have to control the islands just north of Antarctica, which are part of Antarctica, I've then between there and Cape Horn. I've heard it said that uh, there are seven continents in the world, and one of them has never been seen by a woman, and that's Antarctica. Is that actually true? Well, if the power permission is an island, as far as I know, that's true. No woman's ever stepped foot upon the Antarctic continent, and it's the most peaceful place in the world. Well, I'm sure that won't <laughs> last very long. Uh, <clears throat> today, I understand that now that you're working with the, uh, the Arnold Bread Company in charge of frozen foods. Now, is there any future for frozen foods down these frozen extremities? Well, I think the uh, human race can be helped uh, by that. Uh, this was thought out by Dean Arnold, who's, uh, in my opinion, a great humanitarian. He uh, learned that we went down there after four or five years, and finished a meal that we had left there on the table when we had evacuated Little America. Everything was perfect, including the bread. So he got the idea of this frozen bread, and already he sent some to, he sent some to Europe and just very, worked very well over there for the, some of the starving people. That's so so you can store it down in the Antarctic and against the lean years and... You wouldn't have any people in the world really starving if you did that. Yes, in the event of an atomic war... You'd stay there forever. Admiral, you speak of the resources of Antarctica. What are they? What, uh, what are the natural resources there? Well, uh, we've found enough of coal within 180 miles of the South Pole in a great uh, ridge of mountains. It's not covered with snow. Enough to supply the whole world for quite a while. Well, uh, that's, that's the coal. Now, there's evidence of uh, other, many other minerals. Uh, we are pretty sure there's oil. Now, that coal shows the bottom of the world. Now, by far, the coldest spot in the world. Where that coal is gets 100 below zero in the winter. Well, uh, it was once tropical. So, uh, we think there's oil there, and there's evidence, probably uranium there. Is it any secret? Is there uranium there? That would be the only thing that would be practical to uh, actually go after, I suppose. Everything else would be economically uh, unfeasible, wouldn't it? Well, as we recklessly expend our resources, the time will come when we can, we'll have to go after that stuff down there. Well, you know, I, I avoided what you said about uranium. I'm not sure about that. I don't want to have the world fight over the Antarctic. And Robert, is there a competition among other nations to try to get information about uh, Antarctica and uh, possibly to secure some of these resources? Well, uh, yes. Uh, there are now seven nations very much interested. Russia is interested tremendously. That I'm sure of. Australia has an expedition down there. The Argentine, 
the Chile, New Zealand, Britain, and so on. Now, you can understand those people down there being uh, interested because they live down there, the New Zealanders, the Argentinians, the Chileans, and the Australians. And so uh, we, uh, we don't do much about claiming anything. Admiral, you uh, make this sound a little crowded. Uh, uh, are, are, are there that many expeditions now there or en route there? Uh, well, you know, as I said, it's the most peaceful place in the world, but I don't think it will be for long because of this intense interest on the part of, uh, of other nations and this nation. Well, Admiral Byrd, are yeah. private expeditions a thing of the past? Is, it, is expedition and exploration, making expedition and exploration now a purely a government function because uh, of the tremendous no, cost organization? No, I don't think so. I think down south, it may be more or less a thing of the past, but not other, other expeditions that go, there's a lot of them go north now. This latest expedition now on the way is a government expedition, I take it. Yes, that's the government. Have a may I ask you, is there a great difference between the uh, top of the world and the bottom of the world? Uh, the there is. Now, uh, the North Pole is the center of an ocean 10,000 feet deep. The South Pole, the center of a plateau, 10,000 feet high. The North Polar Sea is surrounded by um, continents that are slightly frozen. The Antarctic continent is surrounded by uh, a belt of ice, frozen seas of at least 1,200 miles thick. Now, the south is a plateau. It gets, in some places, 14,000 feet up. Uh, I've been over areas about 13,000, and it's a little bit chilly up there. So there's, uh, there's that big difference between the top and bottom of the world. I don't... Con the north really isn't very cold up there on the Arctic Ocean. Not compared to the south. Admiral well, Byrd, we often hear it said that our young American... In 1961, the Antarctic Treaty System was created. The treaty sets aside Antarctica as a scientific preserve and bans military and most other activity on the continent. For the purposes of the treaty system, Antarctica is defined as all of the land and ice shelf south of the 60-degree latitude. I know that Prince Harry and a team of injured servicemen and women have been walking to the South Pole. Well, they've got there. They've completed the 200-mile Walking with the Wounded South Pole Challenge. That's its proper name. Uh, they've spent more than three weeks trekking through Antarctica, and this was what it sounded like at the moment when they arrived at the bottom of the world. Sounds quite restrained, doesn't it, after all that effort? Well, they spent 20 hours in a cold chamber. This was the prince and the other competitors who were with him uh, to prepare for the conditions that they were going to find down there. The expedition was supposed to be a race. You might remember it being billed that way before it started, but the weather became so bad as they went along that they scrapped the competitive side of things and just joined up as one big team instead. And this was how Harry reacted after completing the mission. Um, we're here. We made it. It's Friday the 13th. Um, We've had so many things go against us. We've had beautiful weather, but bad weather before, and bad terrain, and injuries, and stuff like that. But um, everyone's made it, all 12 of them, the whole group of 20, whatever it is. But the 12 wounded soldiers have made it. Um, couldn't have made it without everyone's help, especially back home. You know, the founders, uh, Ed and, 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 and Simon as well. But um, everyone is... Everyone is so happy. Everyone's touched the ball. We've all had photos. We've all had hugs, few tears here and there. But um, all in all, um, mission success, basically. <laughs> If you're wondering about that ball that he was talking about, it's the, the ceremonial South Pole at the Amundsen Scott South Pole Station. It's, a, it's like a metal sphere on a red and white pole, and it's partly surrounded by the flags of the signatories of the Antarctic Treaty. So it's lovely for a photo, but the problem with it is it's not, it's not the real South Pole. It's about... 300 metres away. So at the so real you, South Pole, what is that? It's, it? Well, there's nothing. That's the thing. It's, you, you can't, so you, to do it properly, to cover all your bases, you have to do both. You have to do the picture with the ball, and then you have to go and kind of hang around at the exact um, why don't they move longitude the ball to and where latitude. The actual thing is. Well, that's a very sensible no, question. It's not what I can answer, <laughs> okay. but it's a very good point. Let's have a look at the weather.